alley cam. Hand it over. Uh, Give me the phone. Uh, now you see him, now you don't. Come on. Oh no, you don't understand. This is an alaya. And a what? -a? Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie stars who dropped off the map. For this list, we're focusing on actors who seem to be heading in the right direction, and then for some reason or another, be it early retirement, critically panned missteps, or bad behavior, they left the limelight. I don't do drugs. Drugs make me sick. They're bad for your body. Up with hope, down with dope. There you go. Come on, man. We gotta go. Get on the train, toke up before we go to work. We're not saying these actors haven't done any work since, but their profiles are definitely not as high as they once were. I'm not leaving. We have to maintain a working government. I want you to get the crisis. vice president, the whole cabinet, and the joint chiefs and take them to a secured location. I'm staying. I don't want to add to a public hysteria that's going to cost lives. Number 10, Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> What are you talking about? What I'm talking about? It may be hard to believe now, but during the 90s, Cuba Gooding Jr. was set to become one of the world's biggest stars. I want to be friends with him. When he won an Academy Award for Jerry Maguire, it seemed improbable that the freight train that was his career would ever lose steam. I got a problem because I don't understand why you got to take something that's perfectly good and mess it up. But they call it the Oscar curse for a reason. And soon, a slate of horrible comedies and bland action flicks began populating his resume, evaporating most of the goodwill he'd earned. Just trying to keep up with the hustle and bustle. <laughs> Roles in American Gangster and The Butler were the sole oases in a wasteland of mediocre films. I'm not them. I want my money back. Hear me? Yes, sir. Every dime. Number nine. Christian Slater. There was a rich man from Nottingham who tried to cross the river. What a dope! He tripped on a rope! Now look at him shiver! At one time an idol tapped by the Hollywood machine as the next big box office thing, Slater filled his early years with roles as a brooding heartthrob type. Mm, there's a lot to be said for throwing off here. Ow! <laughs> the huge hits came next. But so did the bad behavior, arrests, and rehab. I'll repeat myself. By the time of the abysmal performance of Hard Rain, Jesus, oh, oh God, a unique but poorly received action film set during a flood, the love affair he once had with audiences was over. They all started laughing. Opting to use his acting prowess for meteor roles and more nuanced characters than in blockbusters, Slater slid under the radar. I'll kill you, I'll fucking kill you, I swear to God. F you! Number eight, Macaulay Culkin. We forgot him. We didn't forget him, we just miscounted. First garnering the attention of mainstream audiences with a pitch-perfect performance in Uncle Buck. You're just supposed to open the door first. You're not supposed to kick us around. I'm an American, I have rights. Culkin's true star-making turn took place when he starred in the surprise mega, mega, mega hit, Home Alone. 911 emergency. Earl, my house is being robbed. My age is 656, looking boulevard. My name's Murphy. After moving on to a series of mediocre comedies, while also flexing his acting muscles in more dramatic roles like The Good Son, his star began to fade. If I let you go, do you think you could fly? Between 1994 and 2003, he stayed away from the film industry pretty much entirely. It's just that I don't get out much on my own. And even now, he basically eschews the mainstream, instead preferring to stick to indie type flicks and eating pizza. Number seven, Josh Hartnett. Guaranteed to jack you up. Another former heartthrob, when Josh Hartnett was cast as Laurie Strode's son in the Halloween franchise, he parlayed that role into a lasting career. I'm sorry. You don't have anything to be sorry for. Starring in acclaimed movies like Black Hawk Down, as well as Cash Cows like Pearl Harbor, he was everywhere between 2001 and 2003. Then he was gone. I stayed and you made sure of that. Some things changed. I hope you can get used to that. Realizing stardom might not be for him, Hartnett chose to step back from fame. Yes, but his external existence in no way compared to the internal agony of the loneliness he felt. He may be the best positioned to reclaim his former stature if he ever desires it. 
and his role on Showtime's horror series Penny Dreadful is a step in that direction. Thanks for coming out today, and I hope that I have found some favor among you estimable gentlemen. Number six, Gina Davis. What do you mean? An Oscar-winning actress known for strong female characters, Gina Davis is equally adept in dramas like Thelma and Louise. Right. And comedies like Beetlejuice. There's that. And there's that. Ms. Davis may have been an even bigger success than many realize, which is what makes hers a cautionary tale about what can happen to the star of a movie that's credited with taking down a film production company after 20 years of existence. See, I took your balls. After the fame she once enjoyed receded, Davis turned to activism, tried out for the U.S. Olympic archery team, and took a short-lived Golden Globe winning TV role. It's impeccable. Thank you. Number five. Rick Moranis. So you're looking at me? Yeah, because she thought you're some kind of freak. Now come on, hey, let's God, go. She likes me, eh? No way. Disarming and hilarious, Rick Moranis was a perfect fit for child-friendly comedies like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Whoa, 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 whoa. A hilarious addition to sci-fi comedies like Spaceballs. Yes! I always have coffee when I watch Radar, you know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of, of course, course we do, do, sir! And had a biting enough sense of humor to create classics like Strange Brew. Objection. You cannot split please like that. Two bowls of split please soup to go in. <laughs> Perhaps the best tribute to just how fantastic he is was his ability to steal focus in Ghostbusters from some of the best comedic actors ever. I am Vince. Vince Clortho, key master of Gozer. Volga Sildral, our Lord of the Sebulia. Are you the gatekeeper? Unfortunately, he chose to leave filmmaking to take care of his children after his wife died of cancer. We certainly respect his decision, but we miss him. Thanks. Bye, honey. Number four, Chris Tucker. Shit, I don't know his name. I ain't buying shit from me. You don't know his name? No. Damn, don't nobody know his name. Five years after making his Hollywood debut and with just a handful of films under his belt, Chris Tucker stepped into a multi-movie and multi-million dollar franchise. I've been waiting a long time for this. You guys sure do take a long time to process an application. By the time he was paid $25 million for Rush Hour 3 in 2007, he was on fire. You sure about that? Huh? Despite the fact that he hadn't appeared on a movie screen since 2001 and the previous Rush Hour flick. You know what? I don't even know why the hell I'm even here. I ain't even Chinese. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. In fact, Aside from a celebrated supporting role in Silver Linings Playbook. Excelsior, Pat! Excelsior! That's my man. Let's go. Tucker has only appeared in movies called Rush Hour since 1998 and has basically dropped off the map. All right, everything cool now. He down, the gun down. Now get back in the car and just leave. Put your hands on your head! Officer, everything cool, officer! Do it now! Number three, Mike Myers. Welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Linda Richmond. First coming to prominence on Saturday Night Live, this Canadian funny man took the comedy world by storm with creations like Wayne Campbell, Sure, yeah, that's what she said, Austin Powers, oh, behave. and Dr. Evil. One hundred billion dollars. But then he starred in a much reviled adaptation of a classic children's book and created an annoying and borderline racist caricature of an Indian religious leader. Give me a pound. Lock it down. Break the pickle. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> Perhaps sensing the public's dwindling desire for that particular brand of humor, Myers hasn't starred on screen since The Love Guru, not counting his supporting role in Inglorious Bastards. Basically, we have all our rotten eggs in one basket. Or his voice work in the Shrek films, of course. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Number two. Meg Ryan. I have just as much of a dark side as the next person. Once one of the world's most beloved actresses, Meg Ryan's movies have grossed over $870 million around the globe. But nothing on her most recent list of accomplishments contributes much to that sum. I don't see that. After a highly publicized affair with Russell Crowe, while still married to Dennis Quaid began to erode her good girl next door persona, Ryan did herself no favors by starring in the gritty film In the Cut. and the abysmal performer against the ropes. Where's my rock, bitches? 
Perhaps the final nail in the coffin of Ryan's career is the fact that she um, doesn't quite look like the girl we once knew anymore. It's nothing. Not. Those things come and go, as you know. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Relax, man. No one knows you. Hey, hang in there, Zach. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> I felt impotent and out of control, which I really hate. I needed to find sanctuary in a place where I could gather my thoughts and regain my strength. It was never meant to be. Oh, I'm not ready yet. I gotta be comfortable with me first. Stop it! You kill him! I don't want to live! I do not want to live! Going on vacation? Where you going? You hear me or what? Now, when you can afford it, this is the best way. I mean, you can get anything you want from weed to heroin. Now, I don't do drugs, though. Just weed. Number one, Emilio Estevez. Thanks, bro. Son of Martin Sheen and brother of Charlie, Emilio Estevez has received the most coverage over the last few years for his directing work, or when discussing the insane antics of his more famous sibling. First coming to prominence alongside his fellow Brat Packers in dramatic roles before trying his hand at other things, he went on to land comedic parts in films like Loaded Weapon 1. And the Mighty Duck series. I don't care. You wanna lose? Fine. You're the ones who look like idiots out there. Eventually maturing into an accomplished director, Estevez now appears happy to spend his time behind the camera, until the acting bug bites him once again. Uh, speak for yourself. Do you think I'd speak for you? I don't even know your language. Do you agree with our list? No. Which movie star's disappearing act surprised you the most? For more acting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Let me ask you a question, and be honest. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I? Do I make you randy? Yeah.